Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing acute intermittent porphyria. We have already discussed heme synthesis, and in the heme synthesis video, we briefly touched up about touched up on the two porphyrias you need to know for step one, including acute intermittent porphyria. If you guys haven't seen that video, go to our YouTube channel, YouTube forward slash Mad Medicine, right here. There you'll find a heme on playlist for step one where you can watch the heme synthesis video. I highly recommend it because we're going to be, you know, alluding back to that video uh, a lot. Now, with that being said, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel because, you know, we're just posting new videos for you guys for step one every single day. No big deal. <laughs> Anyways, let's start talking. Uh, this is the pathway that uh, heme is produced. Now, this is something we discussed in our previous lecture, in our previous video, so go ahead and check that out. But in this video, we're going to be talking about acute intermittent porphyria. Acute intermittent porphyria occurs when you block the enzyme porphobilinogen deaminase. That is the main reason, and it's occurring right here in this step uh, of heme synthesis. So we're going to be referring back to this slide uh, a lot in this lecture, so just keep this in the back of your mind. I highly recommend before you guys actually go through this lecture, go through the heme video and try to understand all the steps that are taken for production of heme. Now, with that being said, let's talk about what porphyria is. Porphyria is a metabolic disorder that's caused uh, by altered or defective activities of enzymes. Enzymes specifically, okay? And uh, this leads to abnormal or improper heme production. All these enzymes uh, are not working properly, and that leads to decreased heme synthesis, and it makes the heme pathway uh, be abnormal. Now, there are many different types of porphyria depending on the mutation. Now, um, as far as step one is concerned, you don't need to know all of them. You only need to know two main types. The, they are acute intermittent porphyria and porphyria cutanea tarda. Those are the two types you need to know for step one. Today, we're going to be focusing on this porphyria specifically, acute intermittent porphyria. In the next lecture, we're going to be discussing porphyria cutanea tarda. Both of these both acute intermittent and porphyria cutanea tarda are going to follow autosomal dominant inheritance. So autosomal dominant, okay? That's what they're going to follow. By the way, this is a, a molecule of heme. This, all this chemical structure is the protoporphyrin that we talked about previously, and this is the iron molecule you need. And when you combine protoporphyrin with iron, you're going to get heme uh, as your, your end product. So... Let's talk about this disease. Let's talk about acute intermittent porphyria and uh, what it entails. This, All this is going to happen due to partial deficiency of pro, porphobilinogen deaminase. Man, that's a, that's a mouthful. Sorry, guys. Uh, it's going to be caused by a defective or deficient porphobilinogen deaminase enzyme. Now, recall to our previous slide where we talked about the pathway for producing heme. Porphobilinogen deaminase converts porphobilinogen to hydroxymethylbilane. Okay, that's what it does. Now you are blocking porphobilinogen deaminase. So just to review, right here, porphobilinogen deaminase, this molecule occurs right here. What you are doing is you're decreasing the production of hydroxymethylbilane, and that's going to lead to an increase in porphobilinogen because porphobilinogen cannot move forward in uh, the step to produce heme. So let's write that down. This is going to lead to a buildup of porphobilinogen, D, uh, D, porphobilinogen and ALA. Okay, Remember, ALA is going to be converted into this molecule, porphobilinogen via ALA, uh, ALA, sorry, via the ALA dehydrate. Let's write that down. Okay. And then porphobilinogen is going to go and be converted into hydroxymethylbilane. Man, I have to squeeze this one in. Via, we're just going to write PBD just to simplify it because I don't have that much space. All right, so when you are blocking this molecule, you're going to have increase in porphobilinogen, and then you're also going to have an increase in 
ALA. So you're going to have both porphobilinogen and uh, amino levulonic acid ALA being increased in uh, amount in your body. Now again, this is an autosomal dominant uh, disorder, but it has very low penetrance and it's also very rare. So although we're teaching you guys this right now, just keep in mind, it's a very rare disorder. It doesn't happen that often, but it is autosomal dominant, presents with low penetrance. And the symptoms occur as acute intermittent attacks. That's why it's called acute intermittent porphyria, porphyria right? This is a acute symptoms that you're going to have, and it's all going to be due to the buildup of this molecule, porphobilinogen. Okay, so if you can remember one molecule for acute intermittent porphyria, it's going to be por Bilinogen. There you go. Okay, that's why it's happening. All because of this molecule. Because you're going to have an increase in uh, the amount you have in your body due to a decreased activity of porphobilinogen and deaminase, you're going to get all of these symptoms. So what symptoms uh, are you going to get? Well, you're going to get several symptoms, and uh, we're going to talk about them in a second. But first, we need to talk about the causes. What can cause uh, acute intermittent porphyria to get worse? Well, it can be caused by medications that induce the CYP450 enzyme in the liver, like phenobarbital, which is an anti-seizure drug, as well as griseofulvin, which is an antifungal drug. It can be caused by alcohol and smoking, and it can be caused by starvation because when you have low glucose, you're going to increase the activity of ALA synthase, which is going to produce more ALA, which is going to produce more porphobilinogen. Okay, and this is going to lead to the symptoms of um, acute intermittent porphyria symptoms. Okay, so now, finally, let's actually talk about the symptoms of acute intermittent porphyria. These are going to be uh, um, simplified for you guys with the five P's, okay, the five P's for acute intermittent porphyria. First of all, your patients are going to present with a painful ab ab abdomen, excuse me. Uh, they're also going to have port wine colored urine, right? They're going to have polyneuropathy. They may present with physiological disturbances, and it can be precipitated by drugs, alcohol, or starvation. Okay, these are the five Ps, and I think it's pretty high yield to remember this. Most likely on step one, they're not going to tell you that a patient is just presenting with these uh, random uh, symptoms, except for port wine, port colored, port wine colored urine. That's pretty high yield. That's the most high yield stuff. Uh, from all the symptoms that should clue you in to acute intermittent porphyria, right? Now, when it comes to porphyria, the diagnosis consists of the test, uh, testing for increased levels of porphobilinogen and ALA. Now, if both of these are high, okay, you can assume that porphobilinogen uh, deaminase is not functioning properly. So that means you're going to have an increased level of porphobilinogen and ALA. When you're treating this condition, it's very simple. You can use a drug called hemin, which is synthetic heme, and you can also use glucose to downregulate ALA synthase. By downregulating ALA synthase, you're going to have decrease in ALA, and that's going to lead to a decrease in porphobilinogen and linogen. There you go. Messed up. Anyways, porphobilinogen, and that is going to decrease the symptoms that patients present with, which are the five Ps. All right, there we go. So that is the main thing you need to know about acute intermittent porphyria. Again, just to recap, this occurs due to a partial deficiency in uh, autosomal dominant deficiency in porphobilinogen deaminase, which is going to lead to an increase in ALA and porphobilinogen. They're going to present with the five Ps, which are honestly non-specific symptoms that are precipitated by drugs, alcohol, and starvation, except for the fact that they're going to have port wine colored urine. That's important because that should clue you into acute intermittent porphyria. Port wine colored urine. Let's just write that out for you guys one more time. Port wine urine. Okay, so that is a key buzzword for step one that you need to know. 
when it comes to testing these patients, you can use, uh, you can test for levels of porphobolinogen and ALA, and you can treat with heme, in, which is just a synthetic heme, and glucose to downregulate ALA synthase. That being said, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to our channel. You can also follow us on our social media accounts right here. And you can find these lectures on your favorite podcast service for free. Just search Mad Medicine and we'll pop up.